Listen in and join the fun. Learning as we go, new words and stories. Adventures begun. Let's open up the pages. Don't have far to look. It's all in a book. Rupees. Reading room. Rupees. Reading Room! Yay! Hello everybody! Welcome to Ruthie's Reading Room. I'm Ruthie and this is my buddy Ja. He's my favorite stuffy and he's joining us for story time! Yes, it's that time again. Now, I'd like you to go and run and get your stuffy or blankie and bring back a reading buddy and we'll all read together. Run and come back now! <laughs> All right, my little readers are coming on back. Super excited, aren't we? Yes, we are. Say yay! Yay! <laughs> I am so looking forward to yet another story time with all of you. And guess what? It's going to be a two-part story. Part one will be today. And guess what? Part two will be in two days. So I hope you're all looking forward to the first part, but what are we looking forward to? That's right, we have to ask, which book is coming off the shelf next? Drum roll please, can everyone do one? All right. Ta-da! Chandler Goes Camping. This book was written by Shelley Shelton. Come on up here. Let's look at the front cover. What do we see? That's right. Maybe I'll put you over here. You can watch with all of our little readers. Okay, so what do we see on the front cover? Yep, we have a little, we have two kids and it looks like there's a camping tent. Do any of you go camping? Yes. Do any of you do glamping? That might be more along the lines that I would do. Working toilet, working shower, <laughs> pretty much being at home, but in a foresty area. <laughs> but if you do the real camping, you take your tent and all your food gets packed up and you probably have a cooler. What am I missing? A sleeping bag so you stay warm. You can tell I'm not really familiar with that, right? <laughs> but let's find out about Chandler Chandler going camping. Okay, let's put our listening ears on and put our hands in our lap. And we are going to, hmm, oh, I haven't used this. Our spectacles. I think I just like saying spectacles. Let's put our spectacles on. Whoa, see it so clearly. And all the beautiful and handsome faces out there. All my little readers and caregivers, hello, I see you too, parents and grandparents and babysitters. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, we are sitting so quietly, ready to listen to our story. Okay, let's get to it. Ja, are you going to stay right there? All right, I'll be okay with you. You're not too far. <laughs> All right. Chandler Goes Camping. This book is dedicated to all kids who dream of having a family to love them and to the kids and adults that have illnesses. Kids, dream big, big. The first time you dream of how you want to live your life, you're still not dreaming big enough. Dream again and dream bigger. Live your life to the fullest. My daily prayer is that I live the life I have dreamed of having. I pray the same for all readers. Special dedication to the legacy of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi. Mamba Sita and Mamba, you will be missed. Any few NBA fans? Yeah, we grieve the loss of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, don't we? 
And this author, Shelley Shelton, did the same in her book. I am a mama's boy. I love to travel with my mom helping people. I think helping people is the best thing ever. Last month, I fell asleep on the plane as soon as my head hit the back of the seat. I usually fall asleep on the plane. Mom always says that you'd think that I have a job that has made me so exhausted because I always sleep the entire time. It's so funny. Hmm. I wonder what people will do if there was no one to help them. As long as my mom is around, I don't think that will ever happen. Mom helps everyone, everywhere, even in parking lots, grocery stores, women's groups, and shelters. Do any of you have a parent that helps out wherever they go? So you know what it's like, huh? That's great. Mom says it's always best to help people. She and dad have taught me ever since I was three years old to share a lot and be kind to people. So I guess it just stuck with me. That's a very good lesson, right boys and girls? To help out wherever you go, that's good. I must admit, I think I have the best parents in the world, especially my mom. Yes, I'm a mama's boy. Mom said that my dad was definitely a mama's boy. She said that she couldn't tear him away from Nana after they got married. I like to joke with mom about it sometimes. Uh-oh, here comes mom now. I bet she's coming over just to give me a hug. Hi, baby, give me a hug. You know you'll always be my baby, Chandler no matter how old you get. Do any of you have mommies that say that to you? I may say that once or twice to my little ones. <laughs> when you get married, you'll have to take me on your honeymoon with your wife, mom laughs. I'm just kidding, honey. What are you doing? Did you have a good day today? Yes, mom, everything's cool. Mom's hug was the best. Sometimes she travels so much for work. When she travels, I spend a lot of time doing guy stuff with dad. Dad loves to build model cars. So we go into the man's cave, that's what mom calls it, and put together small cars and paint them. It's so much fun. Every time mom travels, she buys us both one for daddy son time. When she's gone, I really miss her. But she said that in the year 2020, things were going to change. Dad and I will be traveling more with her. Yes! I'm dancing, I'm dancing, I can't wait. I proposed. I'm super excited. My birthday is coming up. I'm 11 years old, but I'm so excited about turning 12. Dad said that when I turned 12, my allowance would increase. Right now, when I get on a roll, I get $10 for every A. So I work hard to get straight A's. Whoa. Do any of you get a special allowance for when you make good grades? Wow, that's pretty good. I like to use my allowance to buy stuff for people that need help. Whoa, that's a good use of money, isn't it? If you have to bless others and be generous, that's great. Uh-oh, it's time for bed. I have the coolest bed ever. My bed is a red car. It's so cool. I just love it. Mom put a traffic light on the wall. On the floor is a rug that looks like a racetrack. I love it. My friends love to come over to do homework and play games in my room. Can you guys all picture that room? Close your eyes. The bed that's like a red car, the traffic light on the wall, and the racetrack rug. That would be a cool room. What does your room look like? Yours is a jungle? Yours is a circus? Yours has animals? Oh! Yours is blue. Very cool. And look at my room. I have a zebra. And if you've been here before and you've seen other parts of the room, there's a hippo hiding behind here. Should I show you? Ah, there she is. <laughs> there are four desks in my room. Mom bought them so that my friends and I could do homework together. I'm so sleepy that I can't keep my eyes open. Buzz! My alarm clock goes off. Already? <laughs> I'm up early, ready for school. I'm so excited about today. I get to see my friend Michaela today. She's so cool. Plus, she's so pretty. We've been friends since kindergarten. 
Mom thinks that one day I will marry Michaela. Today I get to see my friends too. Can I tell you something? I gave Michaela a note. I asked her if she liked me. Like, really liked me. I was so nervous. I almost peed in my pants <laughs> laughing. Yes, she said. Yes, I was so excited. I didn't know that she liked me too. We are now boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh no, I'm freaking out. I don't really know what that means. I think it means that we can hold hands. Hmm. That seems like it might work. <laughs> Mom allows Michaela to come over when she is home and we do homework together, hold hands and give each other goo eyes. She's my best friend. We can talk about anything. One day, Mom gave us two boxes of Cracker Jack popcorn. Inside mine was a ring. So I got down on one knee and asked Michaela to marry me. She laughed so hard. I was focused on her smile though. Aw, Chandler's sweet. She said, Chandler, if we are best friends when we get older, I will marry you. Wow, I thought, I'm going to work on staying, <laughs> on staying friends. She is so cute. She's my bud. Even when I don't feel well, I can always call her. She comes over and mom shows her how to give me a thermometer and bring me water and orange juice. Then she places the prayer shawl on me and I always fall asleep. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Chandler has this little girlfriend that comes and takes care of him when he's sick. And let's find out more about this prayer shawl. You remember about the shawl, right? Well, it's a blanket. Mom always called it a shawl, so I just started saying it too, but it's a blanket. Oh, I didn't tell you. Well, in Mom's last book, The Adventures of Chandler and the Traveling Prayer Shawl, I introduced you to the prayer shawl. Okay, tell your mom to buy you the book. I don't want to spoil it for you. I don't want to spoil it for you either. <laughs> buy the book. <laughs> but I met a lady named Linda at one of the women's shelters that mom speaks at. She was knitting prayer shawls. I like to call it a blanket. While she knitted, she prayed at the same time. So mom bought some of them. I bought one for mom and then gave it to my aunt Keisha. Aunt Keisha was so sick with this thing called cancer. It made me so sad to see my aunt feeling bad. I just wanted to make her feel better, so I gave it to Aunt Keisha. She loved it. She took it everywhere with her. She took it to her doctor's appointments, her trips, her job, everywhere. She started feeling so much better. Oh wow, today is the day. I feel like dancing. Yes, today is the day. I am going camping. I'm going camping with my friends, Kermit, Sam, David, Marlon, and Vernon. I've never ever camped before. I was excited about it until my mom told me I probably wouldn't like the bugs. She hates bugs. I'm headed into my room to pack my backpack. I hate packing for family vacations, so I know I'm going to hate packing for camping. Wait, what's this? There's a package with a bow on it in my room. It looks like my backpack is already packed too. Hmm, what do you think happened, guys? I take off the big, gigantic bow. Wow, Mom just surprised me with a Philadelphia Eagles tent with my name on it, Chandler. The Eagles are my favorite football team. Oh, do any of you have a favorite team? Whether a CFL or an NFL team? Yeah. Oh, Buffalo Bills? Yeah. The Steelers? Oh, the Argonauts? Great. We've got some football fans listening today. I love it. I'm excited now. I cannot wait to tell my friends at school today what mom got me for our camping trip with them. Speak it into existence. Mom drives me to school every day. She has had the same truck for years. Well, she has two trucks, but the one she has had the longest is her favorite. Mom names everything and calls her truck Lexi. So whenever she and I go anywhere, we'll run to the garage and greet Lexi. Good morning, Lexi, we both say. Mom always says, good morning, Lexi, it's mommy. <laughs> Mom continues to talk as if Lexi is answering her back saying, good morning, mommy. Mom told me that before I was born, she and dad argued over me riding the school bus or mom driving me to school since mom has always worked from home. Dad said a child would be driven to school. 
Mom did not agree. She said, a child is going to ride the bus like I did growing up. A child is what my parents called me before I was born. They had not decided on my name. My parents said they always wanted to have a son and knew one day I would show up in their lives. They said they would walk around the house, speaking me into existence. I never really understood what that meant. Mom said, when you believe in something enough, you should keep saying it as if it was already done and watch it happen. Mom said I would understand it one day. She said she would stand at the bottom of the stairs and yell upstairs, a child, come downstairs. Dinner is ready. Get your daddy. Dad would sit at the dinner table and look at the empty chair beside him and act as if he was feeding a child, a young boy beside him. They said if they ever told anyone what they did, people would think they were crazy but they wanted me to come into their lives one day. I still think they are crazy, <laughs> but I love my parents. Hmm. I think I'm going to practice this speaking stuff into existence. At school today, I asked my friends what they wanted to be when they grew up. Then it got around the entire class that I was doing this thing called speaking it into existence. So everyone huddled in a big circle to find out what I was doing. Then I went to my teacher, Ms. Harris, and asked for index cards. Why do you need them, Chandler? She asked. I'm doing an experiment with the class called Speaking It Into Existence. It's something I've learned from my parents. I want to see what you're doing, she said. I gave everyone a card. I told them to write down three things they wanted to have in their lives. There were 15 girls and 15 boys in my class. We all wrote down three things that we wanted to have that we currently don't have. Then I told them that for the next 30 days, I want you to say, I love having blank, whatever is on your card, and act like you already have these things. I told them two of the three things that were on my card. I had three things. One, traveling around the world with my mom, and two, become a doctor you know, like my dad. Them. I love when we read in books, good ideas for you guys to try at home, right? So what I'm going to suggest is... And if you're little, you can get help from your caregiver, right? I love having blank. That's okay. You can write over my face. <laughs> but you say three things that you would like to have that you don't already have. And that last thing that you want, write it right here. I'm just joking. Put it on a piece of paper. <laughs> and then repeat it for the next 30 days. It's a good way to start off the year, isn't it? I told them those two things, but I didn't tell them my third thing, which was to marry Michaela one day. So every day I'm going to say, I love traveling around the world with my mom, and I love being a doctor and saving lives. Everyone kept saying, oh, wow. Okay, I got it, Chandler. This is neat. We can start today. Everyone was so excited. My teacher was amazed. She thought it was a cool idea. So she went to her desk and pulled out an index card for herself and said she was going to do it too. See, did you hear that? Another kid inspiring grown-ups to do something a bit different. It could be you. Then she started asking me questions. I knew it was coming. Miss Harris always asked a lot of questions, shaking my head. Chandler, what prompted you to do this? Well, what I mean is, why was this important for you to do and to have your classmates do the same? Well, my parents did an experiment years ago. They wanted to have a child so they would walk around the house and talk like I was already there in the home. Mom always wanted to have a son. She always said if she could have four sons, she would name us Chandler, Austin, Dallas, and Houston. Buzz, bling. The school bell rings and we hear the announcements to end our school day. Woo, saved by the school bell. Boy, am I relieved. I just knew Miss Harris was going to ask me 200 questions. She always asks a lot of questions. Yes, it is time to line up to be dismissed and head outside to be picked up by our parents or get on the school bus. School was awesome today. While standing in line, I get an opportunity to tell all of my friends about the Philadelphia Eagles tent, that mom had packed my backpack, and that we were ready for our first camping trip. Everyone was so excited that we decided to create our own secret handshakes and a name for our group, sort of like how the Boy Scouts are called the Boy Scouts. We decided that if we liked this camping trip, 
that we should go camping somewhere several times a year. Marlon said, hey Chandler, let's call ourselves the Titans. We all agreed. Yes, we are the Titans. The second school bell rings for the next group to be dismissed. I head outside for mom to pick me up. There's a long line of cars of parents picking kids up. I see Madison. That's mom's other truck. Yes, remember? My mom names everything. She named her other truck Madison. One is named Madison and the other is Lexi. My friends come over and talk to my mom's trucks like they're people because they hear mom talking to them. It's hilarious. Can you imagine going over and talking to trucks like they're talking back? Maybe some of you have parents who really love their cars, so you might already have practice. <laughs> I jump into Madison, give mom a hug, and put on my seatbelt to head home. While mom is fixing dinner, we discuss the details of the camping trip today for my friends and me tonight. Oh man, mom is cooking my favorite baked spaghetti. Normally mom gets me to help her cook, but she was in a rush today and said she wanted to surprise dad with having dinner ready for us all since she wasn't traveling this week. When I looked at the table, there it was. Oh man, mom is at it again. My mom is famous for doing what she calls accountability lists. She does them all the time. Sometimes it drives dad and me crazy. Dad calls it a honeydew list. He smiles when he sees it. I try to hide when I see mine <laughs> laughing. As usual, mom has a long checklist of what is needed and what has already been done. Dad comes in and gives me and mom a hug and washes his hands. Mom and dad have their own dance that they do when they hug each other. It's so funny. Then they kiss each other after they hug. We all sit at the dinner table for dinner and hold hands. Dad asks me to bless the food. The spaghetti, bread, salad, and corn on the cob were delicious. Mom and dad washed dishes together. They always give each other goo goo eyes when they wash dishes together. Dad dried and put the dishes away while mom washed them. My job was taking out the trash. When I got back in the house from taking out the trash, I heard the doorbell ring. Ding dong. Oh, brother. Sheesh, mom, dad. Can you two stop staring and smiling at each other long enough to open the door? They both laughed at me. Mom and dad are still giving each other goo-goo eyes. So I go to the door. All right, that's the end of part one. And what did we learn today, little readers? Who did we meet? That's right, we met Chandler, who is 11 years old, that's right. Do you remember some of his friends' names? Kermit, yes, and Marlon, good job. And what are they going to do? What activity? Here's a little hint. That's right, they're gonna go camping. Wow, you guys were very good listeners. And what else did we hear about? Yep, the prayer shawl, that's right. And speaking things into, existence that's right so after you're done watching maybe you and your caregiver can write that out like i was saying so that you can start saying that for the next 30 days i have this or i have that or i will do this right you can fill in the blank with what you want to see in your life all right so another part of the story done and I know you'll join me next time to get part two of Chandler Goes Camping, right? All right, just two days to wait. And in order for you to remember what you do, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way you'll know next time I'm reading. And the next time will be part two. You got it. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. Happy reading, little readers. Bye. Ruthie's Reddit.